Hello guys, how is everybody doing today? Great to see you all today. So the question today I got a basic simple question is, um, Mark, what is the process of manifesting something? Uh, what do I need to know about creating my own life? So this is a great question because as many of you may be new to spiritual awakening, maybe new to manifestation, maybe new to just the process of how it is. So you definitely want to have some guideline on what is happening while you're creating whatever it is that you desire. You want to know, basically, as I use the term, you want to be able to track your progress or track your package. You know when you order something, you get a tracking number, and it's on its way. Well, it's kind of the same process when you're deliberately creating your life. So I'm gonna talk about the process right now so you could sh shed some light and limit the confusion and the doubt you may have. So this is, this is how it's gonna work, all right? So when you're manifesting anything in your life, it's gonna go into three phases, okay? And I like to compare it to, I, I gotta make this very simple for you to understand. So here's how we're gonna, we're gonna do it. We're gonna use the analogy of being married or when you get married. So, all right. So when you first get married, right, you go into your honeymoon stage where everything is good, da 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 da, all nice. That's called the honeymoon stage. Then you go into the second stage, which is called a reality change, uh, phase. It's just like when you, you get married, you're in that stage where, okay, it's not good, it's not bad, or it's good. It's just, it's just like a normal thing. Everything is, you know, okay. And then you go into the third stage. And the third stage would be where you kind of know the person really well and you just kind of know what's happening, da da da. So it's those stages I like to talk about. So just to get your mind fixed into this. So here's how it works. So when you manifest anything in your life, the first stage called the honeymoon stage is where you're really inspired. You're really motivated. You're, re you're doing visualizing, you're visualizing every day. You're feeling good, you're feeling so confident. You want to visualize. You're using subliminals. You're doing your affirmations. Everything is just going good. You're seeing stuff. You're seeing synchronicities happening. That's called the honeymoon stage in manifestation. Now, we go into the second stage of manifestation. And this is the stage that people don't understand. This is the stage now where you don't want to visualize anymore. You don't feel as inspired anymore. Okay, you don't feel like it's happening. You feel like you're stuck. You don't feel the emotion as before. What's happening there? Well, that's the second stage. Then you go to the third stage, where the manifestation is born or comes into a reality. So let's talk about it. In the first stage, when you manifest anything in your, in, in your world, you're going to feel motivated, you're going to feel inspired. Okay, That's called the intention stage. That's called the focus, the attention. That's where you're really locked in and you're giving the information to your subconscious. Then you go to the second stage where you don't feel motivated, you don't want to do it anymore. That means your mind has gotten the picture, your mind has gotten the information. So your subconscious is saying, hey, relax, stop forcing it, I don't need you to visualize as much anymore. This is the most important part of the stage because you don't force it. You have to let go and let it allow. And then the third stage, it pops right into your reality. So for many of you guys, you get stuck in the second stage because you feel like you did something wrong. It's not working. Mark, you know, before I was all motivated, inspired. Now I don't even feel like doing my visualization. I don't feel like doing this. I don't even too much care anymore. I feel like I'm stuck. I don't feel like it's working. Well, it is working. It's just working me on the scene. That's, that's the stages of how it goes. It always goes into those three stages. The first stage, uh, what we call the honeymoon, then the reality sets in stage, and then the manifestation stage. So you have to understand this. And that's when you understand this, then you can flow with the universe. Okay? Flow with the universe. Now, Another component you ask about, a lot of you guys ask, ask as well, is like, hey, Mark, there's so much uh, stuff out there about, you know, mindset, mind work, okay, mind consciousness. 
how does this stuff work, Mark? What is the difference between, uh, you know, the law of attraction and I have the law of assumption and these things? So very simply, the law of attraction is about what you believe. The law of assumption is what you expect. Those two laws can work for each individual. So it just depends on what your style or what you feel or what resonates with you. They're both powerful. Uh, I will say this though, the law of assumption is less work to manifest because you, you skip the belief process and you go right into expecting. So for, for someone to exercise the law of assumption, you have to really be in tuned with your self-confidence and your self-concept. You have to really be optimistic about what you want to get because you don't have to build a belief when you assume or expect something to come into your life. You just simply expect it. Mark, I got my YouTube plaque like you told me. Excellent. There you go. Now you can start creating it. The law of attraction now is a belief, is a something you systematically build up towards your goal or your desire to manifest. Okay, so those, I'm just going through things that you guys are asking me and I'm just flipping through, just going through all this stuff. Okay, the next one is, okay, what about the multiple parallel quantum jump, quantum shift, quantum physics, all manifestation, all of this. Mark, how does that stuff tie into any of this? Okay, I'll go take some questions of what we're going through this. If you're tired mentally, of visualizing then you stop visualizing every day you pick up when you feel it again the thing about the universe and when you manifest in something is about the flow and how you feel you go with the flow you don't force anything to see the big secret to creating anything in your life you understand uh, less is more the more you push the more you resist the more you let go it flows that's the mentality for everything in your life now when it comes to what you're doing now and what's happening here so the thing is when you observe your reality and what you think is real it changes before your very eyes so there is no real in reality as you know it's, a, it's perplexing right it's like reality but there's no real in reality so here's what here's what you need to know to move forward when you're going to do something okay the two things you have to do when you're going to create your life you have to be you have to practice what's called end thinking End thinking is your secret to success when it comes to manifesting. Uh, remember this. End thinking is what you use when you're visualizing, is what you use when you're affirming, is what you use when you expect when you're expecting or expectation, is what you use in your mindset. You must always have a vision of the end results of what you want. You it's like end thinking is you when you're watching a movie and you know when people watch movies you go from the beginning to the middle and thinking this concept you turn the movie on and you skip everything and you go to the end to see what happened and how to, how it find out how they turned out how they won except you have to do that in your mind so whenever you're visualizing anything you don't go you don't you do not go through systematic processes you don't go to linear process you don't go to beginning middle you go right to the end of what it is that you want you just see yourself already at the end of the gold that's the most important. And the reason you must do that is because it's your subconscious mind that will fill in the blanks. Your subconscious mind will fill in the first part and the middle part to make the end part. So you don't have to worry about that because that's too much information for your brain to conceptualize. So always remember that. End thinking, the best thinking. The next thing now is there's everything is all happening at once. All every, Everything you're looking for, your life has already been created. It's already playing out. You're just in different realities, experiencing different fractals of the same thing that you want to experience. So right now you're in this particular reality. Your focus is here. But when you on the other side, you're not looking. There's other realities where every possible outcome you could think or never think of is happening. So you can always jump between realities if you want. So when you're in this reality and you change your thinking, you bring the next reality in. So everything is about what you think and what you focus on. There's nothing else outside of that. Whatever you're thinking and you're focusing on, that will gravitate and become your experiences and your world. Here's the next one now people ask me. Well, here's the thing, guys. Once you become awakened and enlightened and you're in and you're at matrix I got news for you it's going to become very lonely for you because it's going to be lonely because you're going to be awakened to the truth and when you realize the truth of what everything is you feel very lonely because now you understand like wow I am not part 
of the propaganda I can see the truth so it's lonely but you are not lonely there's a difference you know what I'm saying you can never be alone and the reason you can never be alone is because you are connected to everything that is consciousness it's just that you're playing a game of loan that's how powerful the universe and you are the observer of this field they can choose to feel lonely but they're never alone you can choose to feel happy you can choose to feel success you can choose to feel failure you can choose to feel lack but you can't be all those stuff it's just a paradigm shift that you are using to describe what you're experiencing in this what we call field the next thing now I'm going to go into things that people are asking me is now how this everything everything exists as fields fields is field look at a field there's an information plethora of information the field is where it all happens the field is where everything creates and coagulates. you're in the field not only you are in the field check this out you are the field itself so you are this field so it's like you're the you're the CEO the president and the boss at the same time you're running the same company you're just playing different roles so when you're in the field what happens is you communicate with the field through your intention and your thoughts your thoughts have vibrations and you go on into the field the field is very smart so what the field does the field will know automatically whatever you think it must create it and that's why the field comes up with quantum physics that's why I have quantum physics in the particles the particles obey the law of the field so who ultimately controls quantum physics who ultimately control the field who ultimately controlled you I reality the matrix the 4d the 5d the parallel realities infinite thing who controls that, that stuff anyone know can you give me a comment if you know every that's why everything is connected in the field but let me put it to you. who is the boss of the field who makes the field run without that thing there cannot be no field so who can, can anyone answer, answer who is that and if you're gonna say it's God no there's not a God like that so you gotta you gotta, you gotta dive a little deeper who controls the field the higher self okay yes but what okay who controls the higher self there's something else that controls the higher self now okay what is that what is it so we're seeing comments here we we us us okay but what is us what do we call us what is ourselves yes ourselves but what is it who controls ourselves who yeah who is the observer bingo we got it it's called consciousness consciousness or awareness is the boss of all things without without awareness you cannot have existence all you know is pure consciousness your higher self derivatize or is a derivative of your consciousness your consciousness creates your higher self as a helper to you everything is consciousness consciousness is you and me interacting talking consciousness is quantum mechanics without quantum mechanics without consciousness it cannot be physics it cannot be anything without existence nothing can come in so here's a secret for you to move forward just do this always remember this you the only thing that is real if we want to talk real is existence the fact that you are aware that you're here now the fact that you are aware you're here listen to this you can never now never not exist you will always exist somewhere some time some field some being something you only thing you will ever know is this always existing that is important because now if you know you can only exist and cannot exist that means if you're existing you have power over your existence you can manipulate what you're existing in or around and the only person a thing that can do that is the observer or the awareness your consciousness so what you have to start to do you have to become master manipulators of your consciousness you have to know to tune your consciousness into creating and attracting the car you want the success in your business you want the financial freedom you want the health you want whatever it is you desire you have to tune your consciousness. see the thing is your consciousness just streams but it's your responsibility to filter what's streaming there's a person there's a question someone asked me 
Does a person exist even when they die? Answer to that question is yes. Because if you exist, you cannot not exist. So just like, here's how it works. Birth and death are just two things of the same coin. One is heads, one is tail. So birth is the beginning. Death is a transition. Now here's the thing about this. What you have to understand in the process is that you cannot, energy can never be created or destroyed. So in somewhere, some form, you continue to exist after what you perceive as death. Now I can't tell you that you'll become the same person you are because no one truly knows. You may be a different person, you may be the same person, but you may be in a different reality, you may be in a parallel world. You may exist as another form of consciousness. You just may, you may just be the existence of all. You just may just want to chill out and just be conscious and observe stuff. You may decide you want to come back and transform and reincarnate. Who knows? But the fact is you only always know existence. So here's the big picture. So while you're here in this matrix world, this is where you must live free and don't worry and this is where you want to take your life to the fullest because this is the time for you to understand that you don't need to fear anything you have to live your life to the fullest that's what it is so here's a big picture you want to know about this stuff okay is that while you're here you came here for a purpose finish your purpose complete what it is that you want to do find the purpose if you want to find your purpose all you got to do is pick up your phone and call your higher self say hey just like this hey what's my purpose simple as that it will be downloaded to you to find your purpose but the fact is while you're here in this three-dimensional world and thing the big picture you must get is that what you see around you what your senses are telling you Everything that you're experiencing in your paradigm, in your world, you must use caution because all of it is not true, especially in your conscious mind. Your conscious mind filters a lot of stuff out. So for example, when you have a lot of fear, when you have a lot of doubt, when you don't have a lot of belief in yourself, you cannot trust that, you cannot believe that, it's not true. You have the utmost power in you because you are consciousness itself existing. So you have to find you have to fine tune now and understand what's going on. Next thing you go to right now, right? You must learn the power of the mind. The mind is what dictates everything. So here's how the mind works. The mind has two different parts. You have the conscious and you have the unconscious. The conscious part of your mind is known as the ego. The ego part of the mind is the part of the mind that's a tool. It surveys this 3D reality and it comes up and it computes what it wants. And the ego really lives in a world of doubt, fear, and worry. So if you're listening to your ego, you're moving far away from who you are and for your purpose. Now you have to listen to your authentic self, okay? I'm reading, I'm reading comments as I go along. Your soul or your consciousness. Your soul is the same thing as consciousness, people. This is a different thing. It's like saying tomato and tomato. They're one and the same. Soul, consciousness. Soul is a power source. But the ego is a derivative of your consciousness. Your ego formed to protect you while you're in a physical body. To, from pain, from suffering, from survival. Now the problem with the ego is the ego only has one source to learn from. Okay, what is the one source your ego can learn from? Your ego can only ever learn from other egos. Your ego can never learn from the matrix. Your ego cannot learn from other dimension, from other higher conscious thoughts, from other things. It only learns in suffering, in pain, in jealousy, in envy, in strife. That's all it learns from. And then what it does, it portrays and creates what you call personality so your ego makes up your personality and that is not good call it what you want personality characteristics yes but that is not good and here's why it's not good because if you succumb and you adopt and you identify yourself as a personality you are cutting off 
who you truly are. You're not a personality. A matter of fact, you're not even a person. You're playing a role here. So you remember guys, I always talk to you guys, I always say to you guys, I said, I, I, I make a lot of videos and I say, I always say this. I said, I don't see myself as a who or person. I see myself as a what. A what. A what is something that you cannot locate, you cannot identify, it has no gender, it's just pure existence, pure probability, actuality, pure superposition of all things that are possible. That's what you are. What is consciousness? Consciousness is not a he, who, or she. Consciousness is a what? You can't even describe consciousness. But that's what you are. That's what you have to understand. So get away from personality. Get away from your name, your age, your this, your that. Because all that is irrelevant. All that doesn't exist of who you truly are. Now I'm not telling you to just disassociate yourself and don't know your name when someone calls you and say, Hey, that's not the point. The point I'm showing you is to have the mindset to understand that you're playing a game and you use it accordingly. Use it for when you need it and let it go when you don't. The big picture is to understand that personality, names and all that stuff they're just identified tag markers in the matrix. And if you hold on to those things, you're going to hold on to limitation and lack. Because here's the truth. If everybody, uh, they, everyone have a name and a personality and everything, right? But how many people are happy? How many people are successful? How many people are doing what they want in their life? Not many. You know why? Because they hold on to identities that no longer serve them. An identity that doesn't serve you is a belief that was implanted by your parents. These beliefs become your life, become your choices, they become your world. Check this out. I got something for you to boggle your mind and think about. I want you to f consider this. Everything that you believe and know up to this point, you ready for this one? It's not even you. You didn't choose those beliefs. And what I'm saying to you is running around in your head right now is other people's beliefs. None of them were chosen by you. You didn't have a choice to say, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. I don't want to believe that. You came in the game built with other people's programs. So this is what I'm saying to you. Okay, I'll make it simple. I'm going to make it simple. Here, check this out. The person you're dating, the person you're attracted to, the field that you want to go into, the religion you choose, the political, whatever you choose, all of that was not you. It was put in by someone else. You want to prove it to you? Here we go. How many people get into a career, get into a marriage, get into a relationship, and halfway through it they realize, damn, this isn't the person for me. Damn, I went to eight years of school and this is not what I want to do. Damn, what a mistake I made marrying this person. Damn. How many people do that? 50% of marriages fail within the first few years. More than half, actually more bigger number than that. What's happening there? People are being duped by the matrix. You see guys, and you don't even understand and you don't know why. I'm telling you why now. I'm showing you why. So you have to fix it. So how do you fix it? Well, here's the answer to it. Your true identity, your true passion, beliefs, and purposes are downloaded in you from birth. But you have to activate them. They're not going to come online unless you press the play button for them to come online. They will stay in you. So Mark, how do I tap into this. How do I fix it? Knowledge. Someone have to open you and put you onto the knowledge like I'm doing. Someone have to put you onto the game 
someone have to show you that hey those things you're doing you're not who you authentically are and let me show you another one let me get deeper on to show stress disease anxiety depression you know what all of them come from mainly because you're out of alignment with who you truly are when you're out of alignment you're not going to be your authentic self so that's right you have to reprogram yourself mark how do i reprogram myself you have to go into your subconscious and activate your authentic code so okay i'm going to give you the easiest way to do this here's what you got to do from now on stop identifying yourself as this person and this personality start to identify yourself as this infinite existence of everything so that means don't take anything too seriously don't get attached to, to things go with the flow and let it flow and understand that whatever comes in come in whatever go out go out use your mind to visualize what it is that you want expect it to happen without any resistance watch from behind the scenes you're activating your higher self you'll get inspired action and you'll start to make the right choices what people say about you you don't care what people think about you you don't care all you know is that you are here you're always here and it's only what you think about yourself that will begin to separate you from the phony self that you've been programmed into and once you do that you become free you become yourself and now everything starts to work Health gets better, stress decreases, insomnia decreases, depression goes away because now you are freely living yourself. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to feel a big weight lifted off of you. That weight being lifted off of you is the fake beliefs that were stacked up on you by your parents, your teachers, your media, everything around you. And now you are truly free to be your authentic self. And that's where your manifestation power soars up high everything comes into your world now more easily and effortlessly all right that's what we'll cover for today see you guys again next time